it's a summer everybody's out on their computers on their phones you know it's a busy time but thanks for your patience here let's get on to our second guest here uh we're going to try to get uh michael roy back uh either at the end of the show or possibly uh on another episode later on this weekend or next week uh, a fantastic guy we can't let him go that easy we got to get him back on but uh let's move to our second guest mr colton england uh tough uh, down in texas uh he's a good old boy from down in texas six and three is a pro five and two is an amateur he's a lightweight he's competed you know in the fury fight championships legacy lfa uh he was a former lightweight champion in fury um he's coming off a loss here now this is a guy who he's very close to making the next step uh the leap to the next level so i'm interested to chat with him about that you know how covid's affected him and uh you know how, how his future uh is is looking i guess uh with the whole covid situation so without a doubt Let's bring him on. Without further ado, Mr. Colton England. How are you, man? What's up, guys? How are you? Awesome, awesome. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, thank you. Thanks for having me on, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, so you're down in Texas. You're uh, We're having a little Wi-Fi issue, but uh, everything seems to be working on your end pretty good so far. So uh, I got to ask you, let's get right into it, man. Like You're down in Texas. Uh, uh, was wrestling what got you into martial arts? What what got you into this whole thing? Oh. Still there? Are right, you yeah. back? You yeah. back on? Yeah, I'm I'm here. Yeah. Um I'm sorry, what was your question? About wrestling. You know, what got you into martial arts down in Texas? Obviously wrestling's a huge thing in, in down there. What what got you into it? Well, I was big into football. Um, I was a big football nut. Um, I was, uh, I played football. I wanted to play college football. And then I, uh, I was doing two a days one time and I, I broke my arm and broke my arm in half. And then I, I needed something to stay in shape. So I, uh, started doing kickboxing with the Power Ranger. Um, and we, um, he 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 took me in and started teaching me kickboxing and um and and I picked it up really well and in about a year and a half he was like hey man I think I think we need to uh, get you a fight so you know we went in and I was like ah I don't want to I don't want to fight I didn't like to fight anyway yeah. so then we went into a, a a smoker fight so we I fought outside at a biker rally. And in the middle of the heat in the summer, it was like 110 degrees here. Oh my man! And we, yeah, so we were standing there, about 30 people, all in a big group, bunch of fighters, and we all said, uh, they said, okay, y'all two look about the same uh, way. Y'all two fight. Y'all two fight. And y'all two <laughs> and go. So, so yeah, we we jumped on and we started fighting, and I, I wiped the dude out in like 30 seconds. So they were like, hey man, I think you should do a real fight. So we, uh, I got a fight for Legacy Fighting Championship. That was that was before they merged with RFA, which is LFA now. Yeah. And uh, I got a fight with them, and I got a, a first round knockout, and two minutes and fifty seconds. And so, so then I was like, you know, I'm hooked. I'm ready to do it. So started um, started doing it full time, and we uh, just kind of took off from there. And I just started fighting a lot. And as an amateur, I um, I was a, I was 18 years old, and I was the first person to ever. We had three promotions here in Houston, and I was able to win all three amateur 155 titles uh, in three months. Wow! At the same time, and I was 18, so so then I was like, you know, I think I need to go pro and you know give this a a, a real try. So it was very cool. cool. That is a cool story, man. Interesting. I never knew that aspect. I never knew you held all three. Yeah, Very cool. Texas is a hotbed of martial arts, man. Yeah, yeah. It, we uh, we have a lot of good guys out here training. Um, whenever, uh, I mean, right now I just finished training with uh, y'all. I'm sure y'all know of Matt Danger Snell. Of course. Um, yeah. He's got a UFC fight coming. He's got. Well, might have lost you again. Fingers crossed, the Wi-Fi guys, bring them back. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm back. There we go. Look at that. Awesome. 
Yeah, what's yeah, now? Is he a ban is, is, is Matt a bantamweight or a featherweight? He's a flyweight. Oh, he's a flyweight. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's a flyweight and uh and he is fighting some guy from Asia, I is what I think. I, I haven't looked at the guy's name just yet. Okay. But, it was just released this morning. So I was just doing jujitsu with him and uh, uh, a bunch of black belts over here. Kendall Gracie, you know, Mick Maynard, he's the matchmaker for the UFC. Yeah. He, um, he has, he has a gym called uh Hinzo Gracie, uh, Lake Houston. And we were just over there training right now, training some jujitsu. How's he? So, he's a black belt. I believe Mick. Mick. Yeah. He's a beast. Um, a lot of people don't know that. Uh, he's a, uh, yeah, he's a black belt in jiu-jitsu, and he's got really good stand-up. He's got great kickboxing. Uh, so he's a real, really cool guy. Yeah, what a badass job. I've actually messaged him a couple times like because we're really trying to get on Fight Pass. Uh, so it's a, it's a big thing for us to possibly get on Fight Pass. So I messaged him a couple times and didn't get a response. But <laughs> we, we figured out a different way, obviously, the, the more professional way to go about it. But... He's uh he seems very yeah. very humble and very uh, uh I guess uh easy to get in contact with for for such a high profile job. Yeah, super nice guy. Give you, he would give you the shirt off his back. Um, awesome guy. That's, yeah. that's all I have to say about him. He's an awesome guy. Um, has a great school. Awesome guy. I've known him for a very very long time. So really really good guy. Um. But yeah, yeah, it's really cool. Um, we have a bunch of good fighters out here. Uh, I've always been wanting to fight in Canada, so so maybe we can get make that happen. That would be great. You know, I think you're super talented, and it's funny because uh, like I for some reason I thought you fought for a promotion at one point in Ontario, um, or or possibly were you lined up to fight for BTC at one point, or like I know you've had a ton of canceled fights in your um, career. Yeah, we, we I went through a hard time, and it would it would be like I would get a I would get a fight scheduled, and then it would be two or three weeks in, and I had an injury, and yeah. then I just kind of went through a rough patch. I think every fighter does this. It's like I went through a rough patch where I was training really hard for so long that like just boom injury, boom injury, and then a lot of people would sign the contract, and then they would pull. And yeah. I was like, man, I mean, it was just canceled fight after canceled fight. And I was like, man, this has got to stop. Yeah. And then, um, uh, long story short, what a lot of people don't know is my last like three or four canceled fights were because I, uh, I had leukemia and I didn't know it. So, um, it, it was, it was a crazy, crazy situation. We, um, I kept getting injured. And my body was fatiguing, and we didn't know what the deal was. Yeah. And and I was like, man, I just don't feel right. What's what's the deal? And but and then we pulled out of a fight. Um, I was actually supposed to fight at um, for LFA. It was Dana White looking for a fight, and he came all the way to Belton, Texas. Oh. And um, he came in, and I was gonna fight. I saw Dana there. And I was on the TV portion of the card, and they flew my opponent in from uh, Colorado, big team over there, uh, great opponent, and it was just my time to shine. And mm -hmm. I was in the back of trying to get warmed up, and my body started shutting down. Uh, I like the the pain was just just incredible. I my body was sweating, and my joints were locking up, and I didn't know what the deal was. And I was yeah. like, man, something's wrong, man. So then, like you know, I chugged, I chugged like two pre-workouts and I was like me and my coach were like hey he was just gonna go out there and throw bombs and try to finish this guy yeah. and but then I tried to throw a, a kick and my hips locked up so uh and then I and then I like could barely walk and so we were so confused and we had to pull from that fight that like 10 minutes before it went live on tv oh no and we we're like we went straight to the yeah we went straight to the emergency room and they took blood and they were like, Hey man, um, your blood counts way off. You know, we, we think something's wrong. So we're going to transfer you over to a uh, hospital. So, so yeah, wait, they transferred me over and, uh, they were like, Hey, we have, you have some kind, some type of, uh, cancer. 
they're like, we don't know if it's terminal or not. So, oh my um, God. so, you know, we're, you, we're going to do more tests. So I was, I, at this point I didn't believe them. So I was like, you know, all right. I was like, I don't like this place. Let's go to another doctor. <laughs> and so, yeah, yeah. so we left and, um, and, yeah, we, we, we left. Wow. I was like, I'm not, I'm not liking what these people are saying. So then we went to, Man. uh, MD Anderson, which is like, you know, the biggest in the world, one of the best cancer, cancer hospitals in the world. And they, they said, you know, oh, you have, uh, leukemia. And I was like, no way. And so, oh. yeah, I have a, it's, it's a form of leukemia. It's a, a CML. Um, and we got it treated in one year. I had already beaten, I, I've already beaten it. So now I'm coming back. So it's good for you. Be man. A really big story. That is an incredible story. Wow. That is, wow. Awesome that is a huge story. And to look at you, you know, and that's the typical thing, but to look at somebody like in the physical shape of you, Colton, like you're a beast. And it's crazy to think that like how people can just kind of live and have no idea. And then, you know, you find out and it's such a shock, you know, but that's an incredible. It, uh, that's the thing about there. Again, I always say it like there's right. so much more it, to it, being a wild. fighter. Um, it, it, it can hit anybody at any time. So, you know, I, I mean, that's the last thing I thought I had, you know, so, man, but that's crazy. It, uh, wild. It, it definitely opens your eyes and you, you, um, you take things, you look at things a little differently after something like that happens to you. Yeah, you definitely do. I, I couldn't agree more. I, uh, once you, once you have those life changing moments, it's, it's, it's definitely hard to go back. Uh, to, to switch gears a little bit, I got to ask you about, for, for myself, from a promoter standpoint, um, are you still there? Did we lose you? Dun, dun, dun. Looks like we might have lost Colton here, yeah, folks. I hear you. There he is. Are you there? Colton, you there? Are you back? Yeah, I'm here. Are you here? Nope. Maybe uh, uh, try to join again. Just uh, kick yourself out and come back. Looks like we're having some uh, some major Wi-Fi issues on this show, folks. You know, this is uh, 83 episodes, and we've never had this happen. So, uh Lots of Wi-Fi issues today, but thanks for sticking with us here on this beautiful sunny day in Nova Scotia, Canada. If anybody's wondering where Nova Scotia is, uh, again, we're a fight promotion up here in eastern Canada. Um, Nova Scotia is at the kind of the northeast tip of Canada. It's a beautiful place. Canada's ocean playground, they call it. Uh, these glasses, again, are provided by another sponsor of ours, Vitalize. Check them out at vitalize.us. Colton is back. Let's bring him back here for a couple more minutes. And, uh, yeah, I just wanted to ask him a couple more questions. Colton, how are you, man? All right. I'm good, man. How are you? Good. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Some Wi-Fi stuff. Yeah, it's crazy. Crazy. No worries, man. I got to ask you a couple questions I just want to ask you right quick. Uh, about different promotions, you've competed for a lot of them. Um, any big differences you notice from competing on like a promotion like LFA and Fury to any of the others? Like, does the professionalism, does it matter to you or do you just care? You just want to fight? Um, well, I mean, you know, obviously from, from Fury to LFA, the only difference was they had cameras in your face. Yeah. Um, but you know, they, both of those shows are ran perfectly. Um, uh, those are the two main shows over here in, in Houston. And, um, those, those shows are run very nicely. Um, I, I think that, um, you know, uh, LFA is on fight pass now, yeah. but I haven't fought for them on fight pass, but, but honestly, nothing, nothing's different about it. Um, it's just sometimes the bigger stadium, bigger crowd, uh, doesn't matter to me. I'm, I'm just looking to get in there and fight. You know, yeah. I love to fight. I like to fight. It's it's just it's fun for me, and uh, it's just it's my passion. You know, it's it's something I enjoy waking up and going to do in two or three times a day, and um, and I, you know, 
I, oh, of course, you know, I don't like to get hit in the face, but <laughs> yeah. I do like to, I do like to compete. Sure, yeah. yeah, but that's the thing, man. Like you, you could sit and at all these events I put on or the days I train with people or who fight and, or do, I'm a brown belt in jujitsu. I spent plenty of time training with people, but no one gives a shit about getting hurt. Nobody. They all care because right. they're lost. Like that's a competitive nature. Like it's the people are in the sport to win. They don't care. Like people, you care that you got hurt. Don't get me wrong. There's those dark moments, but to lose is the, is the hard part. Right. Exactly. That's, that's every fighter's nerves is like, man, I just, I don't want to mess up. I don't want to lose. You know, that's where all the pressure comes from. Yeah. And, you know, and some fights are bigger than the others. You know, if you, you lose that fight, then you have to you're set back in a year and a half in your career. So, you know, it, it, that's, that's what makes people nervous. That's what I feel. Yeah, you're right. No, you're right. Because there's, there's so much pressure and there's such a small, uh, I look at this, this whole thing that's going on right now, man, with the UFC and, and everything like the the whole market has become so crazy right now like there's fighters like getting shots the ufc that normally wouldn't which i think is fantastic i think it's great right yeah i think that's awesome um you know people are pulling out people aren't ready people yep. are getting injured um you know fight camps are different now you know you can't have just full-blown fight camps everybody has to be almost quarantined so nobody yeah. gets this virus or nobody infects the whole team you know um it's it's very it's very different um but like here in houston everybody just kind of opened their doors uh every gym here just kind of full-fledged opened the doors and everybody's training like nothing happened yeah um but they're starting to lock down again and you know like when we start getting some high level people in there we start kind of watching we don't let people come in now um certain people you know if you, someone even like sniffs yeah weird you know i'm looking at them and i'm like hey <laughs> get out <laughs> oh yeah it's true like i know like here in, in nova scotia we in the last like so we've had three cases in the last like 24 days total so wow. yeah we like we have a population our like so the four provinces like Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, Newfoundland, and PEI, these four provinces is now opened up and the total population is like two and a half million. And there's been, I think there's like 22 cases in the whole area. So oh. we're able to put on events now with up to 200 people, but it's, I don't know Very what's cool. going to happen. It's interesting. Like you're right in the Mecca. Like, what do you think is going to happen with all this? Like they're saying in the media, like Texas could be an epicenter. Like, man, I don't know. It's, it's bad here yeah it's um because you know how texans are man they they don't yeah. care they, yeah. <laughs> they they they're walking around with their guns and they're they're just like ah this virus ain't nothing you know yeah. and they they're, they're wild but um man i don't know um i i just i have a feeling it's gonna pass but i just don't know how long it's gonna take uh i i know i'm doing the right things to keep myself you know, safe and, and the, and my family, you know, everybody's safe. And, um, but you know, I watch who I roll with. I watch who yeah. I train with. If, if, if anybody looks like they don't, they don't shower or if they, you know, they don't wash their hands regularly or, you know, if anything, any kind of sign, I'm just like, Nope, I'm not yeah. training with you. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah. yeah, I'm picky because, you know, like I, like you said, uh, people are falling out of these UFC fights left and right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm just trying to stay ready. And if I get a call tomorrow, I'm ready to go. Yeah. So. Yeah. Very smart, man. It's a, uh, I think it's super smart. And I've legit told people like, you stink. I'm not rolling with you. Like if, if you, if you don't have oh. the ability to wash your gi or I'm not rolling with you, I can't, I can't take that risk. I'm a German folk. Absolutely. Absolutely not. I agree. Um, there have been people that I've rolled with and it's just like, and I was, it's, just smells horrible you know they haven't <laughs> washed their gi after like three rolls yeah and i'm like much. hey you need to go take a shower wash your gi and then come back you know so you know it, it it happens like that and i don't i don't understand it i i wash my gi off for, after every roll yeah. even if it's a one round or if i'm not even rolling if i'm just wearing my gi and i'm lightly sweating in it i'm gonna yeah. wash that gi should you, know, you gotta you gotta take care of yourself 
Yeah, no, I agree. It's a, uh, that's with this whole COVID thing. It's, you know, it's like, there's lots of clubs that certainly are going to struggle. Obviously people are saying jujitsu, but, uh, but kickboxing is okay. You know, like, but at the end of the day, it's, it's a sport and you're either going to have to go back at it full on or you're not. Right. You know, like right. it's not a sport you can kind of dance around. Like you got to get in there and get dirty. Like, exactly um yeah it, it's it's wild uh you know like people are popping up every left and right that i know that are like getting it and and i'm just like it's keeping me like training over here at 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 one specific gym instead of like going everywhere now because i normally you know travel houston and, and yeah you know and train at all the uh the, the top gyms but you know now i'm just kind of like sticking to one gym i'm being yeah. really safe that's a good um, idea. Good idea. Yeah. Man. Well, it's safety's a, important. Yeah. When are y'all looking to have another show? Well, we're waiting right now. We uh, we put our present our pr presentation proposal into the uh, commission on uh, Monday night. So it was a beautiful twenty page proposal. So uh, hopefully it, it's it passes what we need and uh, we can put on events. We're looking to put one on uh, once a month if we can go like August, September, October, November is the plan uh -huh. so if we can we're, we're looking to kind of bang off as many events as we can moving forward like if we can do six to eight a year you know that would be the the, the goal so um fingers Very crossed cool. yeah we'll hopefully get you up here uh god knows when the borders are going to open here but uh who knows uh yeah yeah definitely keep me in mind um i'm, I'm always ready to go uh, awesome that's good to know 155 Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Listen, where can everybody find you online here? Where can you any shout outs you want to give out? Yeah. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at white assassin 155 and, um, and you know, on Facebook Colton England. Um, it's not spelled like the country. It's spelled, uh, -E K O L U N. Yeah. K O L T O N England with a U instead of an A. So yeah, it's everybody, everybody gets confused with the ing, the A and the U. Yeah. Perfect. Just awesome. Just like that. There you yeah, go, folks. Yeah, I, I look forward to seeing you. Uh, look forward to fighting for y'all soon. I hope so, buddy. You know, you're super talented. We'd love to have you up here. I've been following you for a while, and uh, I think you're going to do good things. And uh, keep it up. Keep being a good guy, and, and hopefully we can get you on a fight. And if not, we'll get you on a future podcast again, too. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Thank you. All right, buddy. Drive soon. safe. Drive safe, my man. There you have it. Colton England, All folks. Right. All right. Thank you. Thank See you. See you, buddy. All right, folks. Stay tuned here in about five now, probably three minutes or so. We're going to bring on our next guest, Mitcher, 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 <laughs> Mr. Kyle Propolik. Stay tuned. Three minutes. Hello, folks. How are you? Welcome back. We are episode 83. We're going to bring on our final guest here, Mr. Kyle Prepolik, a guy out of Windsor, Ontario, um, 
two fights in the UFC. He's definitely a staple in the Canadian scene. He's done a hell of a lot of fighting in Canada. Uh, I believe his record right now, yeah, 12 and 7. He's fought absolutely everybody in Canada pretty much. His fights were super tough in the UFC, both decision losses. So I kind of want to chat with him about that. I know what his future plans are. Well, I think I do. I could be totally wrong as hell. Who knows? But uh, he seems like a really, really good dude, uh, tough as nails. And everybody you kind of talk to, he's one of those guys that just kind of keep coming forward and doesn't really care. You can hit him as much as you like. And he's just going to keep smiling at you. So probably the toughest kind of fight you can have. So uh, let's bring him on. Uh, the Windsor, uh, Ontario native, the one and only uh, Mr. Kyle Prepolik. How are you, sir? I'm good, man. How are you? Awesome. Thanks for doing this. Appreciate it. No problem, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. It's been a while. Uh, well, not a while at all. I haven't talked to you before at all, but <laughs> I've been bugging you to come on randomly. But how's uh, how are you doing with all this foolishness? Um, just like everybody else, just trying to, I don't know, just make things happen, stay busy. Um, lots of house projects and little side jobs here and there, you know, yeah. just trying to stay busy, basically. How are things on your end? <laughs> uh, about the same, you know, just kind of trying to stay busy i painted my entire house so like you said uh like kind of house projects and that kind of stuff yeah. but it's you know training is a is a big part of my life not not to the extent obviously for yourself but you know it's it's really a, a hobby for me but it's so important for my mental health and it, it's been a struggle for sure yeah that's a especially like people who do do it it's it's definitely a big part of their life because it, it just becomes like one with you man it's such an awesome sport you know yeah it really is it's how, how did you get into it actually Kyle like it's wrestling was that and obviously in Ontario wrestling is a big part of it especially down in the Windsor area but um basically like after like I was done playing hockey and basically uh, like just start as just as soon as I was starting high school um after I was done playing hockey I'm like you know I want to get stronger I want to do this I do yeah. that. and then went into boxing for a summer I'm like this this is it like the training, the, you know, you still have your team, but it's all yeah, you. Yeah. And then, you know, family wasn't too cool with that at first, and <laughs> then, uh, you know, so I'm like, all right, whatever, you know, gotta, I gotta do what I gotta do. You know, my parents mm -hmm. wanted me to get a job, get license, all that stuff. Cause I was so young and then I'm like, all right, perfect. I'll go do that. Then, uh, didn't really want me to box. They had some, uh, whatever disagreement with the coach yeah. and some other things and then i was like well i'll join high school wrestling and then uh proceeded on to that and <laughs> went to one gym and then went to and still at uh maximum training center now mm -hmm. uh, and i'm just doing my thing so that's basically how it started. you tricked yeah. them pretty much you're like well you don't like boxing i'll go into wrestling which really will just lead me to mma <laughs> yeah, just foundations of everything that you need, right? So yeah. it's, it was perfect. <laughs> That's cool. Smart. I like that. Ontario is such a hotbed and has been for such a long time. Like, you know, and not just MMA. Like, I, I hate to say it all the time because we're on the East Coast and it's like, you know, anywhere in Canada, a lot of times Ontario, Ontario, Ontario. But with population becomes better athletes. It's just, a, it's the way it is, you know? And uh, yeah better facilities, better training partners. It is what it is. But um, you guys all seem to, well, may, I could be wrong, but it seems like people in Ontario, like the higher level fighters all train together somewhat. Um, Yeah. Like we all like, what was it? Like not too long ago, like we would all meet up at like adrenaline, like other gyms and we'd all just train together, whether we're at the same level, same stage or, mm -hmm. you know, different stages of the game, but we would all work together because, you know, iron sharpens iron and, yeah. you know, it's, at the end of the day, we all have the same goal and same dream, and it's the best thing that we could do for the iron sharpens iron kind of thing. Yeah. You know, it's uh, we all have our own pace and process of it, so we got to do what we got to do, right? Yeah, no, it's it's well, it's like I always look, look at hockey. If, if if you didn't have people to play with, it you wouldn't be very good, you know. And it's to, you get those different looks is is really really important. You mentioned adrenaline, Mark Hominick. You know, he's a, a guy I know. I don't probably know him as well as you know him, but I know him pretty well. And he he actually came out here for a charity golf tournament. I did probably I don't know maybe two thousand and. I don't know what year it was, 2014 or 15 or so, but man, what a time we had. What an absolute laugh. Yeah. Him and his wife, Ashley, came as well, and uh, it was absolutely hilarious. So he's a, he's a great guy. Oh, I can only imagine. Mark Mark is a sweet dude. He, that, guy's, yeah. that guy's the best. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's he's an absolute riot. We had a lot of fun out. He, he came and stayed out here in the water at the Pictou Lodge and stuff. And for, for myself, you know, like I'm a promoter, but I'm also uh, – 
I train, but at the end of the day, like I'm not a fanboy. I'm not one of those people who's gonna be like, oh my god, you know. But at deep down, you're like, oh, you know, this is really cool because <laughs> yeah. this is this is a legend of our sport, really. Like, I think yeah. of that. Like some people oh, may not, but he is. Yeah, yeah, 100. He's he is a legend. He's he's one of those, uh, you know, one of those Canadians that you look up to, being like, I gotta be like this guy. I know, like, yeah. I want to be as good or surpass him because he's like that uh, that role model that that athlete that fighter that killer you yeah. know it's and then when you meet him like he's so down to earth and he's just yeah. so chill so calm <laughs> yeah this guy will kill me right now but uh like for my end of, you know but it's just yeah. when that's the beauty of the sport like I, I i you try to tell people all the time like you don't realize it like you have no idea if a bum like me who's just a like a regular hobbyist jujitsu can really hurt you you have absolutely no idea what a real athlete pro would do to you <laughs> like it was a different world altogether yeah, it's just, it's different animals. Like it's just it's the intensity is so much different. It's it's yeah. it's wild. <laughs> yeah, and and that's it. Like muscle memory and everything. Like but the positions that you have trained a million times that regular person just has never seen in their life. Yeah, I mean, hey, oh, exactly. That's spot on. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. So what what you, I, I know like uh, you haven't been. You've been doing your house projects. What what's the plan for you? Like, are you going to fight for BTC again? I know, like, you fought for them in the past. Like, what's what's kind of the future for you? Are you are you? Um, right now is just you know this whole COVID thing going on, and you know every like where we're at, not everything's open yet. I don't know if you guys are stage three or whatever stage you guys are at. Yeah, but, uh, you know it's just we have small groups that get together to do whatever whether it's like going for a run because you're allowed to be with like eight or so people and go for a run or do pad work in the park or in the backyard or yeah. something or grapple in the backyard or just whatever and then you know if you got weights or whatever at home like you got to do what you got to do but you know we're uh still figuring out like everything what, what's going to happen what the plan is because uh we we have no idea what's going on basically yeah so, well uh, ontario is like Compared to out here, like I was just talking to Colton about it, like he, like he's in Houston, Texas, like, like for, for us, you read, and I try not to read the news, but you read the news randomly. It's like Texas is the new hotbed, blah blah blah. Where I'm like, we're out here in the East Coast, and they just opened up, no, like Newfoundland, New Brunswick, PEI, Nova Scotia can all go amongst one another now. So oh, I think see, we have great. six cases between the four provinces or something. So now we can have events up to 200 people. So fingers crossed, we can pull off in a these events that we're planning and that's so yeah no that's that's already like a huge big like big step up from like even where we're at because finally we have patios and restaurants opening and it's just like all right cool like when's uh when's the <laughs> gyms opening up when are the yeah. small groups going to be able to train or you know do that kind of stuff yeah it's it's, it's so frustrating like i know i've said it to other people like you know but it's it's justified walmart has a pharmacy i'm like no no yeah. That's not justified. If they can be walking in there, period, then we can be training, period. 100%. Like, 100%. There should be no argument on that. Well, like, and especially after training, everyone's either showering, wiping up, everywhere gets clean. Like, mm -hmm. I know, like, every gym, it's standard for everybody to clean after the gym, like, wipe the mats down, clean everything up. And it's like, nothing's going to change for us. We got to clean up every time anyway. So, yeah. It's yeah, just good that's, hygiene. That's <laughs> yeah. It's, it's it's more what like the people like at your local Montana's are doing when they come out of the washroom. Are they washing their hands? Like, you know, those yeah. are the people you should worry about. Not like not us. <laughs> <We're>, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Play the old no, soap. It. It's the soap trick game with them. Kyle, what color is the soap there? Uh, you get in and wash your hands. You know. Yeah. <laughs> like I got sanitizer. It's like uh, I guess, yeah. but come on. Yeah, it's not the same as washing your hands for sure. Yeah. You know, but yeah, it's it's kind of crazy. But hopefully, you guys get back in in order up there and and can get things going. I, you see random pics of people training, but uh, to get some events, I, I've been you know I talked to Jamie uh, from Prospect quite a lot. Uh, he's a real good fella, and, and we no, get along and kind of share ideas. Yeah, he's good for the sport. Yeah, uh, he's. He's all about putting on a good show and, you know, like taking care of the athletes, you know, and just make sure everybody's good. You know, like he always wants to make sure like everybody's happy as best yeah. as possible, you know? Yeah. Which is the key. Like I always say that too, in this business, you're, yeah, you're a fight promoter, but customer service, like your fighters are your customers, like your fans yeah. are your customers, but your fighters are too. 
You got to exceed yeah. the expectation, not just meet it. I don't want people fighting for us and be like, yeah, it was all right. I want them to be like, yeah, that was badass. They treated us really well. And that's when you talk to anybody about Jamie, that's how it is. Yeah. Well, that's, that's how it should be, right? It's yeah. like like exactly how you said, man. It's everybody's gotta everybody's gotta work together. Everyone's gotta be good together and you know yeah. and, and good things happen. <laughs> Hard no work question. And, and good things will happen. Yeah. Yeah. Well that's it. Like oh, that's, I guess that's a good segue into your UFC tenure. Like you lost two on decision. Like for you what do you take from that? Ah, it's 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 all part of the process, you know. Yeah. Like it is what it is. Like yeah, it sucks, but it's you know, like anything's possible. I, I just gotta exactly. work my way back. Like I I have my little health issues right now, and you know we're figuring that out. And you know I'm I'm working hard right now just to change my diet up slowly, and you know slowly take the weight off. So you know cuts are not as crazy or not as such a giant increment at one time kind of thing. And mm-hmm. Uh, we just gotta, I just gotta figure that out. And once that's figured out, then uh, if I don't get the Rabdo episodes, then uh, it's game over for everybody I go against. You know, it's mm-hmm. I've had uh, a few fights when the Rabdo didn't happen, and I demolished a few people and just outclassed it. And then when the Rabdo happens, it's just a complete handicap. And I'm like, man, I gotta just swing and just hopefully hit this guy, and hopefully it goes out because then when my my legs just shut down, I got nothing. Then I'm immobile for like. A month or two <laughs> can't oh, walk into anything <laughs> yeah so it's such a big sacrifice in this sport that like you know like i always think to myself kyle like as a ufc athlete so win or lose you're in that octagon and then people don't understand like these athletes have to fly home like yeah that feeling of in that airport like your legs are busted up or, or whatever it is like that's pain that like a normal person just can't understand yeah, it's it's uh it's it's totally a different feeling. Like I don't care about the bruises. That's that's fine. Like yeah. I, I already know that comes with it. It's it is what it is. But uh when it's something like you can't really control or have like an idea of, like it's just like, oh man. Or like when I fought Nordine, like that last kick that went under right to the side of my knee, that mm-hmm. was like <laughs> that was nasty. I saw like the bruise after I'm like, oh I'm like, he busted that up pretty good. And I'm like, yeah. all right. And then when I was on the plane, I'm like okay, this, this kind of hurts a little bit, but other than that, it, like it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Mental toughness. You know, that's, that's, I think a huge part of this game. Like you just, everybody you talk to, it's the exact same. Thing. I don't give a shit about any black guys. I don't care. Cause at the end of the day, it all heals, you know, yeah, like no, exactly. It's, it, and it's a hundred percent that like, you can even, if there's a few like quotes that even Mike Tyson was saying, he's like, you can be as tough as you want. You ain't going to survive unless you have that you know like that mental game that mental toughness is everything it's, yeah. it's not a checkers it's it's chess you know yeah yeah it's true like if, for me like I, i'm i'm a real like my mental game of competing is terrible like i'm not i'm looking at the person i'm like he's gonna kill me he's gonna kill me right now <laughs> whereas uh, like i should be like as a brown belt i should be like more i'm getting better at it but like i should be more confident in my jujitsu right like be like no 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 hold on i've been at this 11 years man like i'm gonna heel hook this guy or whatever right yeah yeah. but exactly. it's like you look at a person like you and you're like no no i'm gonna kick i'm winning this fight i'm gonna do my game plan right and that's where our game plan comes into it yeah it's the whole game plan and the, the fight and flight and it's all the stuff that works together right it's uh like don't get me wrong there's times where i'm like damn i'm gonna fight this beast i can get seriously <laughs> hurt and then i'm like whatever we're gonna go have fun out there because uh, yeah. anything's possible here i just need one percent chance and we got this <laughs> yeah and that's it like i guess like when another old cliche saying is people you know like the the sparring is the hard part right and it's it's really true like there's a lot of hard sparring but people don't spar as as, as hard as they do but i think the workouts are way more intense like the camps are more intense maybe yeah i like the way like i would do like a camp or something it's like I'll have hard sparring once a week, once every other week, if that, and then the rest is just hard grappling, hard wrestling, mm-hmm. uh, situational drills, all that kind of stuff, just to keep going. That Cause it's, it's, I feel like this game is evolving so much where everybody's just so good at something now that uh, it's all cardio game now, cardio and just the timing, the precision, mm-hmm. you know, doing almost doing the right things. Just now it's this, this chess game is getting tighter, you know? Yeah, it is. I like it, it's crazy when you watch athletes. Like you say, like like everything's evolving so quick. Even since Connor, like how many fighters now fight that way? 
like there's not too many people that fight on flat footed anymore like that traditional stance right like yeah. everyone's moving everybody's bouncing every there's like like the way boxers would fight how they're throwing feints and just giving different looks the head movements everyone's slowly starting to adapt more into that boxing footwork being laid on your feet with everything because now if you're flat footed and they catch you you're getting taken down yeah and then it, now, now it's a grappling battle but if you're moving now you can time these guys where other guys are following your rhythm and movement you know so it's it's just who who's going to implement the game plan and who's going to fight whose fight kind yeah. of thing that's how i feel anyway no that that's very well put like coming from you, you know better than me <laughs> so like, yeah, it's, 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 just, it's just a perspective like it's just my yeah. opinion from like even what i've experienced i know if i'm flat-footed either someone's gonna mimic or they're gonna try and outpace and then yeah. it's like okay well if he's gonna do that i'm gonna have to change my game up because i know what this guy is gonna do because of all yeah. the opportunities that present itself for him so now i gotta you know I'll go to my next game plan whatever that may be at that point yeah it'd be interesting if like the way you just explained it there if, if the ufc could kind of obviously it's hard but like if the ufc could kind of implement it, like like the street fighter kind of like a uh, kyle prep looks on the stage too because that first stage didn't work in the fight you know if they could show that progression somehow like okay kyle's game plan was to do this and now obviously that didn't work now he's on the stage two or whatever. yeah like the like a round breakdown you know like the first yeah. round okay it wasn't this wasn't his round but now let's see okay here's round two now the, the total game plan has changed and it's worked or yeah he didn't learn and adapt okay the final round came now desperation mode came and now he's catching this guy or whatever mm -hmm. whatever it may be i i, I get what you're saying now yeah, yeah, yeah. it's kind of interesting we'll have to keep that one it wraps <laughs> there's yeah, one for sure. robin black you can have yeah. that one well he'd be perfect for that he, yeah he's he great would. at those he is pink he, he does a good job he's a good guy for canadian martial arts too supports oh, a lot time. of stuff yeah that's cool interesting well so uh i got another question for you i just a couple more before i let you go if that's okay um yeah. one, one interesting fact that kind of pops in my mind about you is you fought kevin lee at mfl yeah <laughs> what was that experience like like not just uh, the fact it was kevin obviously like you back then it was the same for you but like mfl like it, it's an interesting experience like, like they they do some crazy events with like 40 fights on each card yeah the one that i was at, i don't even remember how many fights there's probably like 20 or 20 yeah. something fights and uh it, it was pretty good like it was packed that's all i remember i remember that place vividly like it was all one uh one unit unless it was like far back and they had like their little like pull-up bleachers and whatnot but it was uh it was pretty busy it was pretty packed like a good showing and it was yeah. almost like uh I can't remember what hall it was like what was that eight, yeah eight I think years it was ago? Two, 2013 i think it was, was yeah it 2012 okay, so seven, or 2013 yeah one of the two yeah so seven still seven eight years i'm like yeah i'm not crazy back in it like that yeah that was uh that was an interesting event it was still like well put like everyone yeah. was pretty cool and chill about it but you know i was he was still young and fresh well he's still young now i'm yeah. i'm I'm only a little older, but I'm, I still feel young, so it's that's all that matters. Of course, yeah, you are. Like I, I'm 39, Kyle, and and I feel great. Like you know, there's some days like I, I'm tired or whatever, but like if, that's everybody. Like I, it's, yeah, man, <laughs> you're, you got 10 years on me, and you're I think the a, a lot of potential for sure. Like 30 is just the prime, right? Yeah, no, like I said, like earlier in the combo, it's 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 only a part of the process. Like I feel like I'll be back because like even. You know, my one friend, he just got re-signed July 25th, Jesse, uh, Jesse Ronson. So, yeah. you know, he, this is his second or sorry, third shot. And it's like, great. I hope he just kicks some ass, you know, like yeah. he deserves it, man. He's he does deserve it. it. I, I hope he just throws them hands because that's, that's what he's best at. <laughs> he is a savage. He's like, that's, you know, the old cliche saying, but I've been watching Jesse from too, from like way back in the score fighting series days. And he's another yeah. guy. He looked really good in his last fight versus Troy Lampson too. Yeah. And he definitely does deserve it. Now, another guy you train with actually down there, Mr. Laramie's got a call to the contender series. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I think he's going to, I think he's going to crush it. And he's really going to showcase like the world on that show why he deserves he belongs there awesome he, the, the kid is so evolved and he's so young like all the the world is his man it, it's yeah. it's only a matter of time till you know after that 
what, August 11th, I think. Mm-hmm. When he goes and performs, I I think he, I think he's going to get the contract right after that fight. Awesome. That's just my opinion. I, obviously, I'm a little biased because he's he is my teammate, mm-hmm. but at the same time, I've worked with him. I've seen who he works with. I, I know how hard he works, and uh, that's such a beautiful thing, you know. Like that's the way a teammate should be, right there. I'm just I'm just being honest, man. <laughs> but proud proud of this guy who's worked really hard. You know what I mean? Like everybody deserves these opportunities when they're when they're when when they put in the hard work and they're doing it the right way, if you're cheating, fuck you. But if you're if you're yeah. doing it the right way and you're working hard and you earn that opportunity, man, all the and he's one of those guys. He's been training. He's that future. Like he's that generation that's been training since he's like a kid. Yeah, just a young kid through his teens and then turned pro and just slowly taken over. And it's only a matter of time until he's like a, like after August 11th. Like I said, I think he gets that contract. I, I think he's going to showcase how good his striking is. He's already like a sick, dominant grappler, but I think he's really going to showcase how he's going to mix that up. He, like, I, he, I think he could GSP this. Oh, that would be so awesome. I think you're right. <laughs> what is it? That is that 125, too, right? They're the, his younger brother. Yeah. Tony. Tony. And he's yeah, one. I, what's what's TJ? A bantamweight. He's a uh, feather. Feather. He's a featherweight. Yeah. 145. Wow. Right? Jesus. Yeah, he, he looked really good in his last fight. I wasn't sure he was a bantamweight or featherweight, but he's also the thing about him too is he also plays the game really well. He yeah, understands the game. His social media presence is really good. Yeah, well, and his fight IQ and just he's very active everywhere he can. Yeah. Right? So, and uh, that's it's it's excellent, especially this this day and age. Like you got to be on all those things, showing the world what you're doing. You know, whether it's just. Hey, I did pad work today. I'm cycling. I'm doing this. I'm doing mm-hmm. that. I'm going grappling, whatever, or you know, I, uh, whatever, just tweeting, yeah. whatever, and doing his thing. Mm-hmm. And all the all the kudos to the kid. You know, he's he's doing it right. Yeah. Well, it's he, he's doing it right, but he's probably looked up to guys like you guys who've done it too, right? Like that's that's the idea. Like again, back to a team. You know, when kind of, kind of people can can work together and, and I guess. Uh, I don't know what I'm trying to say, like breed off uh, other people's success. Like, again, we were talking about Hominick, right? And, and like, I'm sure yeah. you spent shit tons of time training with those guys. Yeah. Like we would go like his, our coach Reno would bring us up all the time. Like we'd go up if, if not probably like three, four times a month, if possible. And then we, you know, our coach would bring us to other gyms like uh, at Rufus sport or, you know, a few years ago, me and TJ went out to uh, Team Alpha Male just because, nice. like, you know, Mark and all those guys, they help us out. And, mm-hmm. You know, we want to train. We want to be better. And, you know, they're totally open about go cross-train, become the best you can be. Yeah. This is this is a selfish sport. It's a team sport too. But at the end of the day, you have to worry about yourself. Yeah, that's very true. It really, like, at the end of the day, like, that's why I, I take a – I say that a lot. I'm like, listen, I'm not the one getting in there. Like, I'm not going to bullshit your, like, at the end of the day, like, you are the one getting in there. Like, and I'm shocked at how many athletes, though, don't surround themselves with good people. Like, they're just like, yeah. I want to get, and I'm like, no, like, you got, like, at the end of the day, like, it's a business. That's, yeah, that's it. Your own, like, the way, like, this, the, the one quote that I, you know, someone hit me with a long time ago that's forever stuck with me is, like, you're only as good as the people you surround yourself with. Mm-hmm. And it's it's true, no matter what you do, whether it's business uh, martial arts, sports, just life in general. It's it, it really goes to show, like, whoever you surround yourself with, either you're going to be better or you're going to be worse, you yeah. know? Yeah, that's it. That's it. You can either, like, after a loss, you can either, you know, like, again, you can sit there digging the dumps and be like, oh, blah, 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 I got to change this. Or you can surround yourself with people who are going to help you fix those holes, right, to, to make you better. So it's, it's like anything in life, I guess. You are always learning and, and growing and, yeah, it's it's cool, and it's cool to see the scene in Canada how it's evolved. Like, it's uh, what are your feelings on that? Obviously, you know, GSP and Hominick were, were you know the stars, and then you you have Rory, and he's kind of getting now to the point where probably a couple more fights. Who who do you think uh, is it? Is it TJ and yourself that going to carry the carry the flag forward? <laughs> carry the torch. <laughs> yeah, I still I still have lots of life left. So I, I believe mm-hmm. not only like myself, I believe the Laramies. Um I believe, you know, Ronson still has a lot of fight left. Yeah. Of fight life left. Um there's still tons of like Canadians and I think the more this sport is evolving, the more Canadians are being shown and the more 
we're going to have Canadians on that roster. Yeah. That's just how I feel. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I go with those choices, that's for sure. <laughs> I think you're right, though. I think the, there's going to be more opportunity, especially now that, like, it's going to take a while to get um, – to get some fights back in Canada, I think maybe, maybe next year. I don't know to be honest when it's going to happen, but if you look at their events, like they, they announced their events for August and they have like, like five, there's five weeks in August and they're doing one for the five weeks plus the contender series every week. So they have eight events in August. Yeah. So that's, that's already like huge there. So, and you know, people who are last minute or, whatever like my my one friend justin james like out of nowhere just day notice or whatever he had they get called up like anything's possible yeah. the lottery shot is always there for everybody certainly so even like those uh like un undiscovered gems like at any moment you know just good record whatever mm -hmm. or you're exciting all right there you go you can you can you make this way can you do this yeah sure all right let's go yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and that's the thing right everybody wants that shot you know, if, if like, no, I shouldn't say nobody, like, don't get me wrong. Like if, if FLA called, <laughs> they'd be like, mm, no, but if the uh, UFC calls, you know well, what I yeah, mean? Like, it's, it's it's, 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 that's what I'm saying. Like people will fight for free if they have to, to get that opportunity. It's just the Mecca. Yeah. It's, it's to put themselves out there, increase their value. Right. It's yeah. well, and a, a huge, I guess, what can you say? Like, almost like you're proving to yourself and everybody else like yeah i'm this good i belong so, here yeah i belong yeah. exactly <laughs> yeah it's it's interesting because like for me like we have like, i bet we have 300 people now in our database who want to fight for us pros from all over the world with really good records that are six seven and oh or whatever it happens to be and it's just it's interesting now because like i look at the what do you think it is? Because you have these other guys who are like, listen, we deserve more money, which is, it's a no brainer. hundred percent. You deserve more money. But, Everyone wants more money. Of course. So, so why do you think uh, it'll never, it's never going to change. It's not unfortunately, because like, as soon as those guys say that they're, they're they they do not want to fight. There's the TJs who do. Right. Yeah. Or like, uh, what's his name? Fighting the welterweight Gilbert Burns or is that Gilbert is that Burns? Yeah. 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 Where it's like, you know, Masvidal wants more money. Okay, well, Gilbert, you want to fight? He's like, exactly. yeah, let's go. Yeah. And I, I understand where he's coming from, but at the same time, you also have to find – You're kicking your yourself in the foot. You're, yeah, it's like you're not – they're not getting those NFL or NHL, you know, salaries or the, those wages, mm -hmm. you know. And it's like you, you really got to – there's a point in time where it's like, okay, I got to fight just because I need to get to where I want to be. And then the rest – you got to be smart in the business aspect too. Because you have to yeah. take care of yourself at the end of the day, right? Yeah. You're very, very right. I actually think it's actually helped the UFC even more. Oh, just honest. with like that publicity kind of stuff about and, the more and, money? Kind of thing. And, and money. Like the fact that like I, I just – I think it's going to help the UFC more when it comes to bargaining power. Like there's no fans. You know, it's a, it's a hard thing to justify. And – until everybody bands together and it's like here as a promoter like again our, our main event sean wallace and ryan rohovich we paid them both they didn't fight because we had canceled because of the weather we paid them both yeah we did it we didn't have to but we did it and that you know there's lots of money to be made that could be shared around no question about it but yeah when people just keep fighting it doesn't help the case that's where it's interesting where a union would be interesting i don't i don't know man like as a promoter i'm I don't know how I feel about it either way because I want people to get paid more, but then you're also like, I don't know. Yeah, every everyone like wants to be paid like what they want, right? Mm -hmm. So like, who was it? Oh, uh, Artem brought up something about bare knuckle about having a flat rate, and that that made me think, okay, you know, like if if they're fighting for flat rates and they're under a contract, so instead of doubling down or whatever, it is like where let's say as an example, you make. 10 and 10 and win yeah so if it's already let's say he starts his contract at 20 as just simple math and then if he wins you know it goes up for his next fight it doubles mm -hmm. up or whatever you know just like little ideas like that mm -hmm. i was thinking i'm like if yeah. they change their almost like fight pay and how it goes but then i feel like everyone would coast if it was a flat rate like that there's nothing well what if it was like say like for example so if you're on a first year like the usc i believe Correct me if I'm wrong, but it's four fight deals for the most part. 
Yeah, it just varies. Whatever, like it could be a three fight, four fight, five fight. Like, so say it was a four fight or a four fight deal at sixty grand for the year for a new guy. For example, you fight four times. That's sixty. But then if you win every time you win, you get another ten or double or whatever. But that way, yeah. it's guaranteed salary. That's where I think it's got to get to that level where people can't be surviving off contractual fights anymore. They have to have a to be a professional athlete. You need like, and I'm just using sixty. It technically yeah, should be like hundred and sixty, but yeah. you know what I'm saying, right? Uh, I get it. <laughs> like, yeah, the, and, that, and that's the thing. It's like okay, so or just have like a bracket system. You know, entry level fighters before let's say before their top 20, you guys make yeah minimum this minimum per fight, like 50K per fight out of your contract. New contract or you become top 20, it goes to 80 to 100, yeah. depending who you are, whatever your market value is. Obviously not including like your sponsor bonus or like if you get mm -hmm. Monster, Modelo or any of that other stuff as an example. Uh, and then it just goes up from there. So then top 15, top 10 goes up. And then if you're, you know, top three to champion, I think champ champions should be getting minimum like two million. Yeah, you know, like I I know it's still the sport is still young, but it's like if you have a boxing champion, they're making yes. too many numbers. <laughs> yeah. You know, like it's true. But, but boxing's been around for ever. You know, it's been around for so long. That's why I mm -hmm. mean, they still young boxing, and they have the right thing because you know not only are they getting paid, but they also have sponsors that are paying heavy. Yeah. So it's. Yeah, it's the sponsors. Game. It really is an interesting game. I try to explain that to a lot of people. Like they're like, "My job's tough." I'm like, "Come work in the fight business." You know, like it's yeah, a it's hard, hard <laughs> business. A lot of personalities, but it's fun. You know, at the, at the end of the day, you you do it because you love it, and you you yeah. get to pe meet people like you, and that's what it's about for me. Like just yeah, it's about the people and everyone you get to meet. You know, it's uh, yeah. Just, even when I was at uh, Alpha Male Gym, like Faber said, please. I remember him talking to like the whole class when we were training one session. He's like, you know, everybody's got dreams here. He's like, fight because you want to. Because if you do not want to and you're aiming for money, it's not going to go well. You got to do it because you love it. And then the money will come. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, you know, I'm like, yeah, it's like, it's that process, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. And that's very true. You look at like all you guys who and girls who get injured and you just do it. Because you love it, and, and it's it's a pretty admirable sport, man. And whether we, as not so much we, uh, but as as the fight community doesn't often get as much respect as it does. A lot of people turn the nose to it still to this day. It's come a long way for sure. But you know, it's uh, I think people like yourself and other professionals in the community keep doing what you're doing, keep being positive role models because it's it doesn't go unnoticed, man. So you know, you got a, you got lots of fans out here in the east, and uh, I can't wait to see you fight fight again, buddy. Yeah, thank you. I, I can't wait either. So, yeah, if you if you want to, just get in contact with Reno, you know. So then we'll, we can get something going. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, the, the East Coast is always always a fan of uh, high level athletes, man. So hey, you, you never know. If, uh, we uh, uh, we don't know right now if uh, if our events in August and September are only going to be maritime athletes. We're waiting on the commission for that to see what's yeah. going on. But uh, we've heard rumors that the Quebec border will be open to the Maritimes possibly at the end of July. So who knows what? Who knows the truth? Yeah, I, I don't know. But yeah, like I'm expecting like events to start back up, like late fall until like next year, where things will I think be normalized finally. But yeah, other than that, it's just self development from here and just just get better with the time, you know. Awesome. That's good to hear. Well, any quick words of advice before I let you go for any future athletes like who, who are kind of getting possibly going to be in the same situation as you, you know, fighting at, at a high level like that? Um, like I was saying earlier, just enjoy the process of everything. Don't worry too much about, you know, what other people are saying. Just focus on you. Do your best. Like go train everywhere you can, um, you know, find people and be surrounded by the good people, whether it's mm -hmm. coaches, friends, family etc just be around good things you know be kind that, that's another thing too be kind to everybody it doesn't pay when uh you're a jerk or a jackass you know yeah yeah it doesn't <laughs> well, well, it's easier to uh, be like gsp that's, yeah. that's probably the best role it's model I can think so of. true in in this sport what i find a lot kyle is people in life too people judge someone based on like what they've heard about the other person 
You know, like th- in that, like we all heard that game of telephone. It goes through a hundred people and it comes back. It's like, oh, he's a good guy. It goes around twenty people, and by the end of it, it's like, no, no, he's the biggest asshole you ever met, right? Yeah. But it's yeah. judge people on how your interactions are, are from them, and and that's really great advice. Just be kind and, and be like GSP. That's a that's wonderful, man. And you're a real a class act yourself. You know, you're you're super <laughs> intelligent, and I like speaking to you, man. So hopefully, you can work something out here on the on the East Coast for you. Yeah, that'd be great. And thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> You're a good dude. <laughs> All right, right, man. It's, uh, it's uh, I don't know. It's uh, for me, it's, I, uh, it's about just being a good guy. Like you, you can make all the money in the world. You can put all the events in the world. You can sit there in a suit on with a belt. You can be be the face of the promotion if the promoter all you like. But it's not that's not what we're about here. About being the face of like for it's the fighters. We're just the guys who happen to be fans to enjoy to put on a fight. And if you have a platform, use it to to do good, right? So that's what it's about for me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, all right, buddy. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Hopefully, it won't be the last time we'll be able to talk to you. Like I said, if it's not in a fight, but uh, on a future podcast. But, but lots of love to you guys in Ontario, and uh, hopefully, we'll get to chat with you soon. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> awesome. Nice meeting, all right, man. Thanks again. There you have it, folks. Kyle Prepolik. Thank you. See you, pal. Yeah, take it easy. Great guy. Great interview. Uh, fantastic uh, athlete, talent out of Windsor, Ontario. Kyle Prepolik. Super great chat and, uh, yeah, very knowledgeable. Uh, Mick Roy, we're not going to be able to get him on here at the end of the episode, but that's all right. We'll get him on another day. Uh, another quick shout-out to our sponsors at Vitalize for these fantastic glasses. Check them out at vitalize.us. Blocking the blue light, keeping me sleeping well. As well, our friends at Maritime Madness Hot Sauce. Check them out, FLA10. Use the code, save 10%, and get free shipping all over Canada, over $35. All right, folks, lots of love. If you can be anything in this world, be kind. We'll see you tomorrow. Oh, my God. Oh my God. And I hope you take it on the wrong way. Do you slump it up, it up our place? This red light put your ass in a dark place. Right. <laughs> Marathon from the land, which is the city of Babylon Dress in my head, don't confuse me for cinema I'm one of a kind, I just go like a DJ My one to be five and not many books Bro, ain't no Akuna Matata Cause you shouldn't fuck with a man You're naked, no hooks in, but he gets it anywhere Run up on a Oh, good over him, right That's it Thanks for watching. Remember to hit that subscribe button. And as always, thanks to our friends. We'll see you tomorrow.